Now in this video we have to create a new layer um, called overpainting. In the overpainting we're going to refine a lot of our areas. So I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to call it overpainting. And on the overpainting we're going to probably have to do some zooming in. So I'm going to zoom in on my um, image a little bit and um, I want you to rem be reminded that you can do a zoom all windows and then when you are working on yours um, and you use the um, magnifying glass and zoom in, it zooms in both. So you see how that works? Um, Alright, so let's zoom in here and basically my shape is all wrong, right? I need to make it much rounder over here. Um, I'm going to start putting in some of the highlights. I wanted you to also notice that, you know, um, these fruits grow from a small round object outward and kind of go out. Imagine like the lines on a pumpkin. It's very exaggerated, but those lines are also on apples. So I want you to see how these lines are curving around. So during this time, I'm going to be using strokes that go this way or this way or up and around um, to make the edge. So let's start with that. And I'm going to get on the brush tool and I'm going to start going here. Alright, so for the overpainting, um, I'm going to soften up my brush a little bit. So I'm going to click into my brush settings and I'm going to change its hardness down. Um, 40, looks, 40 looks good. Okay, don't make it super soft, okay? Alright, and I'm going to, like I said, I need to extend this out. So I'm going to take this this color here, this dark red, and I'm going to extend this out some more and make that a little rounder and it's definitely lighter as it's coming around so I'm gonna let it get lighter here and make it a little bigger and let's see there we go and um, uh, up here right if anytime you need to sample from the original you can just remember that uh, sometimes you have to exaggerate your sampling so if it's not coming through right you might have to alter the colors a little bit to make it work and uh, definitely get some up here. I'm going to shrink my brush some. If you're wondering how I'm shrinking my brush on the fly like that, um, basically what I do is I hold down Alt and it makes the um, color picker come up. But then I hold down the button on my pen which is like right mouse clicking. And I hold it down and turn and just move right and left and I can make the brush different sizes. Alright, so let's show you how that works. Alright, so anyway up here I need to make this come around the top just like that a few little lines okay and um, let's extend this over some a little softer okay and let's also make some lines going up and down to remember those little striations I was talking about that make it go up and down make those happen here and those just make it look more apple-ish, if that's a word. Anyway, and then over here I'm going to make these definitely darker. So I'm going to pick up a darker color here, kind of make that coming out darker. And sometimes I'm sampling from there. Sometimes I might also sample from my original palette. Okay, that's okay to do that. Just if you notice your your colors are starting to fade, um, I want you to definitely check that out and see if it's because you're you've kind of tainted or um, you know, it's kind of like in real painting. If you paint long enough uh, with a brush, it's going to end up looking muddy or turn turning like a muddy gray or brown. Okay, and always using the strokes up and down vertically to make that happen. Coming around the side here, and it looks like this is a little more leveled out. So I'm going to pull this down some more and back up and extend that out a little more as well. So the overpainting has um, a lot of fixing to it. It's when we fix and it's definitely turning a little grayer over here on the edge. That's okay. And all right, let's see. I probably need a little darker down here for a second. And just like that. So now let's zoom out some. 
Okay, yeah, definitely take a look outside every now and then and check it out and see how it's looking. It looks like I need to get a little darker here, maybe a little more red up here. All right, so let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to get a little more red. Let's see. Yeah, a little more red. And make that transition a little slower. And then a little darker down here. All right, just a lot of lines. A lot of lines. Okay. All right. So now let's see if we can um, kind of notice what our overpainting has done. If I turn off this light, the, um, the eye on the overpainting layer, you can see how we've adjusted it. I haven't done any adjustments up here. What I'm going to do is see if I can create a selection here to help me fix this top. Okay, so um, but just like using a um, piece of tape or something or a mask in um, real uh, analog artwork, we're going to do the same here. We're going to take a uh, lasso tool and just kind of make a little line here and right now I'm going to select like that and I don't really care how this bottom edge of my selection looks it's really just the top that's important and so right now I've had this part selected meaning I can only work down in the bottom side so at this point what I'm going to do is go back to my brush and do some brushing kind of downwards from that little line um, so that I get these little lines kind of growing out of this edge, kind of like the edge of a comb. Anyway, let's just see how that's looking. All right, just kind of take it down, and every now and then, you know, every now and then, change your brush and just go crazy and make some skinnier lines. So I'm making some skinnier lines, make some redder lines. Let's see, you know, just every now and then, do something crazy like that and it just kind of mixes things up a little bit for you I mean it doesn't have to be perfect like I said this should look like a painting alright and um, and then when you're working on that what we want to do is um, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit over here anyway um, alright what we want to do is then select the inverse so that I can then work above in the back side okay so I'm going to say select inverse and now I'm, I am selected everywhere else. Let's zoom out so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So you can see out here is selected, right? Okay. And what I want to do is um, I'm honestly going to kind of redo a lot of this. Um, I'm going to start with the dark color here and just kind of go through and do this really quick. All right. And I'm going to get some of these lines to come up and jump over. I'm going to change my brush size. All right. Get some of those reds coming back, just kind of like so. And same thing this direction. And I don't really care how far out I go. I don't care if I have a line going like that. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to undo that one. But um, it's not a big deal if I do that. All right, so now I want to definitely get this nice green color. So I'm going to sample some of that. And I'm going to start from inside the selection where nothing will paint and then move up out of it. So let's see how this works. Just like that, and kind of crisscross because you have semi-transparent brush. It's going to um, overlap and create some cool effects that'll look like the lines that they need to be. And I'm gonna make some grayish ones here. It looks like. All right, very good. And some orange ones coming back this way. Okay. Um, maybe even lighter in here. Let's see how that's looking. Yep. Very nice. Okay, and a little bit. I'm just gonna get some of this lighter over here. All right, for a second. All right, and uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and do the stem at this point. So let's see if we can do that stem. Uh, let's switch to a. Um, let's see. Let's get a darker color in here. And you know what? Just because I'm a little nervous about it, I'm gonna make a new layer for that stem. And if I need to, I'll just merge it down to my overpainting. I'm going to make a little stem oop, too wide. Let's make it a little skinnier. Very good. All right. And I'll make it go up. And it's got this little thing here. All right. I don't know what you call that, but it's there. So we'll paint it. Why not? 
and we're going to give it a light side as well. Let's just see if we can get that stem going. All right, and maybe some. All right, something like that. Maybe a little too dark. I mean, too light. Very good. All right, and if I need to maneuver it or shrink it, I always can later. All right, so now I'm going to deselect, and you'll see that we have definitely done a lot of work on that. Um, I'm also um, really excited about that line that's, that's, that has been made there, but I wanted you to notice something. Um, if we zoom in, see how the top of this has like a highlight? We want to get that highlight in there, so I'm going to select and um, uh, let's see here. We're going to select and reselect. And what I want to do is take my brush, make it be white, really big, and we're also going to make it softer, way softer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down my overall opacity for just a moment on my brush to where it paints really, really, really lightly. And now if I select the inverse, which now I just have this area. See, I can paint here. We'll undo that. Uh, I'm just going to kind of make a little haze right there, a little haze right there. That's it. All right, and deselect. So now I got that haze going. That's what I needed. Yeah. Oh, it looks like there's a little shadow from the stem. We'll go ahead and add that in. So we'll reselect, and this time I'll turn it to black and make a little shadow right there. Yeah. And deselect. All right. So now my apple overpainting, I'd say, is pretty good. You could um, start uh, cleaning up the edge. Remember, you'd have to go back down and um, to the overpainting. I'm going to go ahead and merge my two layers together. Um, you can control E that or right click on it and merge down. And this one here is going to be my overpainting. Um, and 